Okay, I made sure that it's gonna work this time. So unfortunately, this is not gonna be my first impressions. Not really, it's not my first impressions, but you know what I mean, like this is not my first take. I kind of already forgot what all I've said because it's been, you know, throughout the day, it's been a few hours, so. It's not a rehearsed review. I don't like doing rehearsed things, but I probably should start doing that a little bit at least. But I think I remember what I said at the very beginning is like uh, stuff like my new PC is all good and stuff like that. But the the webcam quality is what's holding you back. I think so it's not a cheap webcam, but it's not an expensive one either. So it's it's like one of those things. And also, I need to get a, a mic clamp thing on the desk where I can like lower it you know like you guys have seen bigger youtubers have things like that I need to get one eventually uh, they're a little, they're not like super expensive so I should be able to get one eventually that's all I wanted to talk about I think so let's move into the review so first of all we've got Jake so Jake his STMR is pretty good uh, has guts on it two-handed I always I kind of just prefer that it was if it was one-handed so then a lot of supports could use it if they could equip guns because since its attack is not really that high, it's not going to be that useful. But for him, yes, it is. It's very useful. Um, just because it's a two-handed gun, and he gets a benefit out of it of activating here as passive, his trust passive. So basically, he's another Regina or Noctis type unit, but he's way better than those ones because he can imbue himself. He does not rely on anyone else for imbuing. And he has the killers like like the other two guys have two girls two people sorry mix of words there two people have and also a bunch of other things like huge mod buffs and stuff like that where you can finish game capability but unlike Noctis and Regina he has pretty much no chaining capabilities at all other than his limit burst I think because he has six hits but he probably wouldn't do dupe chaining with this anyways he's he's primarily going to be a finisher and you should only think of him as a finisher don't ever think of his lone purse as a chaining mechanism his lone purse is really only good for extending his mod boost because he gets a huge mod boost when he uses his lone purse dude huge mod boost so 250% TDH very nice for now uh, keep in mind again for anyone who's not seen my video on that long time ago there will be a raise in TDH to 400% so that 250% is not going to look as nice as it is right now because all you need is 50, but eventually you're going to need 150. That's a little harder. Um, with that being said, he does has he has, has passive um, demon reaper and dragon killers, which are very nice. Those are pretty uh, pretty good boss types to have. And also, yes, he'll hit very hard when when you can set them all up. He says limit burst, his imbues and killers if you need them. And all his cooldowns are all in order and all that kind of stuff. He's going to hit really hard, yes, he will. So, of course, as all units do, he has to have some drawbacks. And... Well, they're, they're, I don't really like this kind of these kind of units, so I, I have a little bias, but I'm trying to be down the middle. I, I, I talked all of his past, all of his good stuff. There has to be some bad stuff. And yes, he requires a lot of setup. Not a gigantic amount of setup, but if you want to use it as a finisher, you're going to have to use a little bit of setup here. And with that setup, he's taking up a slot, you're building out a team around him, so you expect him to deal really good damage, is the, is the thing going on here. And he will do really good damage. And unfortunately, only his cooldown is his only in peril from... I, I'm pretty sure that's correct. Um, and it's only a three turn cooldown, probably. So... The boss dispels the you know the imperils are kind of screwed unless you have someone else who can do that for you and like i said um i think in my first claim i, I talked about claim versus him but i kind of already forgotten so there i, I guess that wrote down there in case i forgot and yeah he's he's strong now but when claim comes who's going to even remember this guy who's going to even remember him claim is much better claim can be self-sufficient does not need any external support she can imbue herself she has killers. She supports the team by removing attack buffs and like stop and stuff like that as well with while mod bo boosting herself. So Clayum is just far better of a unit in terms of that capability where she can cap her own chain really hard, but also being self-sustaining and things like that. So but this is not about Clayum, but this it's the best comparison I think I can ever make because they're kind of both finishers in a way. But she's much better. So my score will be seven out of ten. 
And if you need the rotation, I think this is a decent rotation down below. And it's not down below, like you guys see it, the optimal rotation, where it always is. Uh, I think that's just how I think it will be. Um, I hope it is. Um, I'm always trying to make the best rotations as possible, and some people have even said that they're following my rotations. So that makes me feel good. So 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10 is not a bad score, by the way. There has been some people who think that 7 out of 10 is a bad score. It's a really not. It's a very, to me, my score mechanism, 7 out of 10 is very average. 6 out of 10 is starting to go a little lower. 5 out of 10 is, well, they're not probably not very good. And you know, it's going lower and lower. So 7 out of 10 is very average, a very good score for a unit like this, of course. So let's move on to the next one. Now I know this one's going to be kind of a contention here because there's another breaker in the, in the, in the wings here uh, that competes with this deep breaker, so it's kind of hard to decide which one you might want. But I will talk about her um, pros, of course. So she does have some indecent support capabilities such as imperiling for your team. She also has ailment, ailment cures and also has some healing, which are all very nice things to have that a breaker can do. On top of that, she has Perfect Dispel, which Perfect Dispel means that basically the Perfect Dispel removes the buffs that the boss has. In like, for example, if the boss the, bo the boss has like a, an attack buff, the Perfect Dispel will remove that as long as it's dispellable, of course. Perfect Dispel just means that it just removes the buffs, not the debuffs. So in case you don't want to get rid of your hard-earned in perils and breaks that you put on the boss, uh, you want to use the perfect dispel, which is a very rare ability that not many people have. Um, but with that being said, let's move on to the next portion. Can give chaining to other allies a single target, but at least I think it's single target. I remember that it was. I think it is. And I don't know what that noise was. And also, she has 85% breaks on her lumpers, which is very nice. Um, and comparable with Vaughn. But they do different things, as I think is what I was trying to compete, convey before, is that they they do different things. Vaughn has Mirage that he can recast for a few turns, and she can heal, and Vaughn can finish, and be auto auto provoker much easier than Lid. Apparently, Lid can do it, but I just I think that Vaughn is much better in that role than than she would be. Um, she can heal, he can't. He can Mirage, she can't. So it's a lot of it's a, it's a it's a give and take kind of thing. It's it's, it's based on what you preferred more. Um, so with that being said, let's move on to the cons, which aren't very many. There's a few, but not very many. Uh, she has a counter to give AOE machine AOE machine killer, whereas her normal form, I think, it was just just an ability that you could cast. I believe she had machine killer. I think. Um, and the only other con really is that her. Her um, ailment cures are single target for like stop and charm and stuff like that. So, and the biggest con I think is her S team R. Her S team R is so bad, but at least it kind of works with her because she. I think I've tested it and she can actually use it with her dual cast and triple cast. Her her, yeah, her dual cast you can use with those abilities. But other than that, for anyone else, it's trash. I'm sorry, it's pretty bad. Um, most healers have a ways of removing stop and charm is really not that prevalent. So. For a score, I will definitely be giving an 8 out of 10 for healing Avatar Lid. That is a very good score, and we're going to move on to the next one. Now here's the one I think everybody wants to know about. Uh, this one is also in a very big contention. Uh, so yes, I'm Old Dragon, Dark Fina, her SDMR is very good, but not a lot of people can equip whips. But it does give 50% true do good for magic, so that is also a good thing. But on Global, um, there is the thing, the AIKDS teamer. I know not everybody has it, but it is an option if you did go for it. Uh, she can't. Uh, other units could equip her S teamer that would not normally be able to. So that's very nice. Anyways, moving on. She has a very strong mage that is very good for Dark Visions, of course, because she's debuting in, in a Dark Visions event and raid. So of course she would be, because most of all, most all of her moves are single target besides her lone person. The some of the other moves that you just, she just uses in mod building and you're not really using them as it's not her main moves. And she can easily mod ramp because her elements, earth, dark, and wind, you just use the, you go from the top to the bottom and you start getting mod boosts off of those things. So that's how you do that. 
and also she has self cap cap self capping capabilities, but only for dark. So she has a move that costs one first crystals that hits really hard and really it, yeah, it just hits really hard. But the other elements are just there because they're there, uh, not because they're her strong suit. Her strong suit is dark, and this the stigma with dark it should just go away now. Um, dark is not a problem anymore. You can use dark in most bosses, so just don't be afraid of using dark elements. Her Olympus is filled at the exact start, which means that you probably should you probably really should use that the first turn. I think using the Olympus is great because she gets quad cast, mod boosts, and also I think it does in barrels. I'm pretty sure I remember it does in barrels. So her Olympus at the start, you just want to just do that. Um, six times cap for magic, which is actually insane. And that's the main reason why she is so strong. Uh, other than her self capping potential, the six times cap for her is makes her really strong. Unfortunately, there are some down drawbacks to this situation, which we'll be getting to very shortly. But other than that, yeah, she can cover three elements. One element preferred more than the other ones, but most mages are like that. Most mages and going forward are going to be like that. So hers is not going to be anything special. Um, and the six times cap, I think, is the main strength besides the self capping. And other than that, let's go into the cons. Um, if you don't have any true to wield magic, she's gonna be a little harder to build for being strong because you really want to make her, you know, true to wield unit for that six times cap sweetness, juiciness. Um, so she's not very free to play friendly unless you got lucky because free to play people can get lucky, guys. People always like want to play like the car, like. Free to play never has anything and you know stuff like that, but then in my Discord, people are pulling rainbows left and right from tickets and stuff. So free to play players can get things, guys. There are there are options. There are STM Moogles. There are Omni Prisms and stuff like that on Global right now. Um, so there's things like that that you can do. And other than that, I mean, she's very. The only other kind I can think of is that she's very MP intensive, because you need. To, she has an she has a move that costs like over 200 MP. That you need to upkeep so that you get the Olympus back and you can self cap again. And you need to keep doing that over and over and over again. So, unless you have someone else who can give her Olympus crystals uh, to fill up to the next turn, so you're gonna have to have an MP battery of some kind. And I know MP battery is kind of like an older term that might be people using anymore because most units can give MP like healers and things. So, they don't, you don't really need an MP battery anymore. But that is just something I'm gonna throw out there. Um, and our rotation is down below. I've, I've I've used her many times, so I know I know exactly that this is the rotation that you guys should be following. Depending if you're using dark or not, I would really recommend just you sticking with dark. So on turn three, you're seeing that I'm probably not going to. I'm not using that um, move because I'm assuming by turn three you should probably have it by then. I should be able to have that uh, limpers fill, but then after turn three you should probably use that. Um, or I should be using that limpers fill right move again and stuff like that and you're starting to rotate that stuff so i'm going to give her an 8 out of 10 and the reason for that is because she's very strong she has a lot of single target moves she's very good for dark vision she's very good for the normal game state uh she can obliterate pretty much anything in the, in, the, in the normal game state of course so there's that um and uh, hopefully this one has audio this time i don't want to have to do this a third time guys so but thank you guys who did watch that like immediately as soon as they uploaded people were watching it and you were like oh dude there's no audio so i quickly turked that down so i pre shout out to you guys who commented right away and, and told me about that because i had no idea i just assumed everything was working as normal um and that's, that was early in the morning when i'm not really thinking properly i'm not looking at the the bottom of the screen seeing it see i can see now that it's, it's definitely working so shout out to you guys so thanks for watching this is the end of the review now, you can click off the video if you want, but um, if you like the video, please give a like. If you dislike the video, please give a dislike. And let me know down in the comment section down below if you watch, if you pull for this banner or you are going to skip um, and wait for the next week. Or maybe you're waiting until next week to see what's going to happen and then maybe you'll pull in this banner then after you know. So there's that too. So other than that guys, thanks for watching and I think that's about it. That's the end of the review. Thanks you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.